Make sure you check out the previous video so you understand the significance of this diagram over here because right now we're going to be talking specifically about cyclic photophosphorylation. All right, one thing before I jump into it, uh, I need you to understand one idea here. We said that the purpose of this whole thing in the beginning was to produce these two molecules, ATP and NADPH, because they're going to be used to help convert carbon dioxide to glucose. That's that's the Calvin cycle, okay? Now, if something's up with the Calvin cycle, for example, there's not enough carbon dioxide or there's a lack of enzymes or something like that, well, then these products are going to build up, right? Because if they're not being used, then we're gonna, they're going to accumulate, and that's a problem. So I want you to... Now, one further thing. When NADPH, let's say this goes somewhere over here, okay, somewhere far away, and when it normally is getting used, after it gets used, it drops off its hydrogen because it's a hydrogen donator, and it's actually going to come back over here to this form as NADP. Okay, so if this is being used properly and everything is running smoothly, then we'll have a, a reflux, a whole bunch of NADPs coming back ready to be recharged with more hydrogen. But now I'm trying to present a situation to you where there is a problem with uh, the next step, which is the Calvin cycle. So when carbon dioxide is, is low in concentration, okay, for whatever reason, or temperature is a problem, and temperature is uh, messing with enzymes, and the Calvin cycle doesn't happen, then it doesn't matter how much of this we do, we end up with tons of ATP and tons of NADPH, but none of it gets used. If none of it gets used, then eventually we have a bunch of charged batteries and no batteries to recharge. So why do we need batteries that are not charged or uncharged um, because they play a big role here as the final electron acceptors. So no matter how much light you have exciting chlorophyll and bringing these electrons over here, if there is no NADP plus ready to accept the actual electrons, then that stops the entire thing. The whole factory shuts down. Now, why do I have to keep this factory going? So I'm going to outline this. This, this is going to be like 60 seconds over here. but. If this whole factory shuts down, let's remind ourselves why these electrons are moving. These electrons are moving so that we can do something called uh, chemiosmosis, which means the electrons are moving, which allows protons to fill up the space. If the protons fill up the space, then I can make ATP through this concentration gradient. But hold on. If there is no final acceptor here, so if this dude gets crossed out, let's cross that out. If there's no final acceptor here, then these electrons stop moving. If these electrons stop moving, then no protons move in here. If no protons get pumped in, then I have no concentration gradient. No protons move out. ATP synthesis basically stops. So everything comes to a halt, and the cell cannot actually make ATP anymore. So that's bad news. So hopefully that made some sense. Or go back and rewatch all that again. I tried really hard to explain all of that. If all of that stops, then we don't get any ATP. Here is our backup system. Photosystem 1 is our backup system. And it's called non... Sorry, it's called... Oh, this should not be here. Ignore that. This should, it's actually called cyclic, cyclic photophosphorylation. We're going to see that here. So, um, let's hide that for a second. When carbon dioxide concentration or temperatures limiting factor, I just said the Calvin cycle is not going to work, then NADPH, this guy over here, is going to accumulate. If that accumulates, then we don't get any NADP plus coming back, right? Because we have a bunch of charged batteries and then we run out of these guys. In order to get more of these guys, this guy has to go somewhere, drop off his H, and then come back as NADP plus. So there's not enough NADP plus as a final electron acceptor. If there's no final electron scepter, acceptor, then the electrons will stop flowing. If they stop flowing, then protons won't be brought into the thylakoid space anymore. If that's the case, then there's no more proton uh, concentration gradient, and in that case, ATP synthesis actually slows. So, but if we have photosystem one right here, look at what happens here. When light actually hits photosystem one, these electrons get excited, but instead of jumping this way because there's no point to go here because nothing's going to take them the electrons actually jump back to a carrier after photosystem one and the electrons just start moving like this so the light excites the electrons here and the electrons just jump over to here and they continue in a cycle well what does that allow well if electrons keep moving
you can see over here, if electrons keep moving, these excited electrons are carried from a, uh, a carrier from PS1 to something in between PS2 and PS1, and then they keep, it keeps on moving around. And the movement of the electrons will actually allow uh, protons to be brought in. If protons are brought in, well, then you get a proton gradient form, and you can actually continue to make ATP. Continue to make ATP. So the purpose of all of this is to allow ATP to continue to be produced even when uh, NADPH ends up accumulating. So you can still produce ATP for all kinds of purposes in the plant to stay alive and everything like that, even though um, even though NADPH production is being halted because none of it's getting used up. But that's because there's some kind of limiting factor. So I need to emphasize this. When carbon dioxide or temperature is the limiting factor, um, that's where cyc cyclic photophosphorylation is going to uh, kick in. So one of the reasons, so this is pointing at this actually. So, um, oops. When these are the limiting factor here, then the Calvin cycle can't happen. And one of the reasons could be there's no carbon dioxide or the temperature is inhibiting the enzymes from actually working. That is cyclic photophosphorylation. Make sure to use that in conjunction with the previous video where we talked about non-cyclic photophosphorylation and then you can see how these things overlap together to make everything make sense. Um, really quickly, this just to emphasize what I mentioned before, if NADPH builds up, normally what's supposed to happen is NADPH is supposed to be converted back into NADP plus plus H plus. It's gonna travel somewhere, drop off its hydrogen, and it's gonna come back as this, and then it goes back, and then everything just gets, it's just like the recharged batteries, uncharged batteries, and they need to be recharged. But this thing is the final electron acceptor over here, right? It's the final electron acceptor. So we need these in order to have some place for the electrons to go. So that is the idea of what I'm trying to show over there. Our next up is gonna be the Calvin cycle, and the Calvin cycle is obviously uh, not, no, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't convince you. It's gonna look complicated, but think big picture and you'll be okay with all of that. So there we go, cyclic photophosphorylation.